Welcome back to my booktube channel. It's been a while. Uh, the two videos I thought I had ready to go, the program that does the edits apparently did not save the edits, so I'm back to the raw files, so I have to re-edit those and blah blah blah. But today I'm going to talk about uh, my favorite series, Jasper Ford. And specifically the series that I like the best is his Thursday Next series starting with The Air Affair. I um, first picked up The Air Affair, I think I was an undergrad, so it was like around 99, 2000 or so. I was just at the Barnes & Noble near my parents' house and I saw this on the table in the paperback and they were like, oh, it's clever wordplay, literary illusion, uh, bibliowit, and it combines elements of Monty Python, Harry Potter, he has hadn't read Harry Potter yet. Um, Stephen Hawking and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but its quirky charm is all its own, and that's the blurb from the Wall Street Journal. And I was like, well, it's spring break or whatever, and I'm bored. Um, books are good, so I bought it, and I took it home, and I, you know, basically my parents had to pry it out of my hands for dinner, um, and then send me back to school. Got my books signed. Um, so I had, you know, this is my paperback, and the, fu the cute thing is, he stamps all of his, like, Goliath approved, so it's like this little goofballs in-joke. Um, and, but the funny thing is, since I, I didn't have the first one in hardcover, because I had picked it up in paperback, and so I dug around on the internet and I found a bookshop that said, do you have hardcover first edition? They said, yes, we do, and I'm like, oh, can you send it to me? This is like a Sunday, and the reading was Tuesday evening, so I didn't think I would have it for the signing. And they said, okay, sure, and I had them send it to my parents' house. Um, and my parents called me on Monday and they said, by the way, we have a package that got delivered to the house for you. And I was like, what? And it turned out that it was my first edition of The Air Affair, which it came signed. They didn't tell me that, it just did. Um, and so when I handed it to Jasper um, in the signing line, I was I, I had the whole stack. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, it's Uncle Edgar's Mystery Bookstore. I still have the little, the little slip in there from them. Um, I said, oh, by the way, you don't have to sign that first one. I just happened to have it in my bag because I'd run out to my parents' house to grab it before the reading. Um, and he said, oh, no, no, it's fine. And he opened it up. He's like, oh, well, I signed it with the old signature. And so I'll just sign it again with the new signature and then I'll stamp it Goliath approved. Um, so <laughs> so it was, it was a really great reading. Um, it was also one of those where I very much suspect that the hosts who did the readings at the time had not actually read the book. So, um, but Jess was charming. And so Thursday is one of my favorite series to attest. I currently have all seven in hardcover. Um, this is where I get really annoyed about rejacketing about book six in the series. They started to start rejacketing all of the books pe the, for the paperbacks. And so they redid, so the hardcover jacket started coming in the new rejacketing. Um, and so they look different, and that annoys me greatly. Um, but also, aside from my first paperback, when um, in 2007 um, I went to Austria with my parents, um, I was not unfortunately able to get um, any of his books in German. So I went to visit my friend Kate, who was studying for uh, an advanced degree in linguistics in Cardiff, Wales, um, since. European flights are cheap, and so while I was visiting her, I did manage to find the first four Thursday Next books in paperback, in their UK printings. Um, the fourth one I picked up randomly at a used book stall in kind of like a bazaar, and then the other three I bought at Waterstones. Thursday is probably one of the best book characters in that she, yes, she's a woman, but Jasper just allows her to do the job that is needed. If she needs to go kick your butt, she kicks your butt. If she needs to jump into fiction, she jumps into fiction. If she needs to be really vulnerable, because like, say, in the first book, um, her, the guy who becomes her husband, Landon, they were together and then they had a fight over something pretty major and they broke up for 10 years. Um, and Thursday, I think maybe they could rekindle something and then she finds out that he's getting married to really someone who is kind of a horrible person. And he, Jasper allows her to be vulnerable. And then later in the books, she's a mom. She, I mean, he allows her to do all of these things. She's never hemmed in by the fact that she is a female character. In a, and in many ways, in a, in a very male-dominated role. She has a lot of male co-workers, but she also has a lot of female co-workers. There's a lot of diversity in Jasper's books. Um, she's really smart. She, you know, Thursday is supposed to have this encyclopedic knowledge of books and literature, and she does. Um, 
And, but one of, one of the things I also love about the series is that they did not Americanize the books for publication in the U.S. This is something that drives me insane. In fact, there's a really good essay in um, a collection called Harry po uh, it's the Ivory Tower and Harry Potter. It's a collection of scholarly essays on Harry Potter. And they bring up a point that you, you destroy kind of what makes them culturally unique when you Americanize a book from, you know, British English or Australian English or something. So one of the things they didn't do for Thursday Next was Americanize her. Um, and so all of the really great things about Britain that Jasper kind of make, gets to make fun of, you know, how we talk about the weather, how we eat toast, how we drink a lot of tea, you know, things about Wales. Wales is a socialist republic um, in the Thursday world, so he gets to kind of talk about Wales. And cheese is heavily taxed. And the second book, Part of the second book, and then entirely the third book, and then parts of the fifth book, and entirely the sixth book, um, take place within the book world. Jasper has created this amazing, rich world um, inside books that is very much like our world. It's full of bureaucracy and policing issues and you know, just crazy, crazy things. And that those are the best parts. My favorite books in the series are book three, where Thursday is almost entirely within the book world, except for a couple of scenes where she jumps back out into the real world with Miss Havisham, who is her mentor. The fifth book, which <laughs> probably is my favorite, Thursday, I mean, she's jumping around with all of these roles. Um, um, so Thursday's having to train herself, Thursday five, um, and then she's also forced to train Thursday one through four. So there are three Thursdays in this book working against each other. Um, and this great and amazing, and by the way, Thursday has a dodo named Pickwick, and she's adorable. Um, but so I actually did just finish reading book seven, which is what kind of got me to make this video. Um, book seven was released in October of 2012. And um, due to the fact that I have a little problem at the end of series, especially a series of books that I really like, um, if I know that there are going to be no more books, it's really hard for me to start that book and finish that book knowing that the likelihood that I will have new stories to read um, is, is going down. And since he ages Thursday in real time, um, you know, if he wrote a book set in 2015, Thursday would be about 65, I think. And so she can't keep doing all of the things that she does. She's aging. Um, and so he won't be able to continue her forever. She's not ageless. Uh, um, and I really like it, but I'm re just really is terrifying that you, know, you start a book and it's just like, oh my god, I'm only going to get maybe one more Thursday book after this. And so I, and I didn't like what he had done with Thursdays. You know, me on a, on a personal level, on a narrative level, it works amazingly well. But me on a personal level, the previous book, Thursday is Injured. So book six, one of our Thursdays is missing, is told entirely from the point of Thursday five. And so the real Thursday has gone missing. No one can find her. And Thursday five is narrating the book completely. And so they find the real Thursday at the end of the book. Um, and then uh, the seventh book, um, The Woman Who Died a Lot, um, picks up, you know, after Thursday has partially recovered from the events of book six and I really didn't like what Jasper had done to her because she broke a leg she's on painkiller and it's hard to manage the pain so she's on a lot so she's kind of loopy her reflexes aren't good she's being marginalized because she's aging and because she is injured um you know it's just kind of I didn't like what he done with her it just it hurts so much she was just like your friend so I got the book in October 2012 like I'd had it short I had it ordered the minute you could pre-order it, I got it, I took it home, I read like three chapters, and I went, oh my god, I don't think I can finish this, and I put it down. The only reason why I got this finished was that the seasonal reading challenge on Goodreads, the 50-point challenge that went up mid-challenge this season, what, had an option where it was like, pick a book that you put down, you had to read a couple of chapters and then set it down for at least six months, pick it up, restart it, and finish it. And I said, well, I, I, I'm going to have to do this. Because I really, I, I really have to read this. This is my favorite series. Um, and I did. I read it. I, it's still not my favorite Thursday book. Um, my actual, my least favorite Thursday book is actually Thursday 6. Because she wasn't in it. It was narrated by somebody else. Um, and this, this has a very interesting concept in that not only is Thursday kind of being marginalized. And she's got all these problems. And, 
there's a smiting. It's and it's very classic Jasper. It's very crazy. There's all sorts of things happening. But somebody is making synthetic Thursdays. Presumably it's Goliath. If you've read anything about the series, you know who Goliath is. And so he does a lot of really interesting things creatively with it. Um, so this book, <laughs> I was like, this book is like if you got Jasper Ford to write the Blade Runner reboot. Because there's a lot of things that go into that. Because the synthetics are not considered human, they are considered chimeras, so they can be disposed of legally without any, like, you've murdered a person because they're not actually real. Um, you know, so he does so much in this, but, um, there's no book world in this. And there's no, they mention Spike. Spike is one of my favorite side characters. Stig is in here a lot. Stiggins is in the undertop. But Spike, who is probably one of Thursday's best friends outside her husband Landon, um, and he's the one that does the the vampires in the werewolf disposal and stuff. And there's almost always in one in any book that she's in the real world, a scene where she and Spike, it's a totally dead end scene narratively. It does nothing to further the narrative. It's just amazing and great. Um, where she and Spike go out to defeat the undead. Um, in book one, Spike calls over the radio that he needs help, and Thursday's the only one that responds. Um in the next book, she needs several hundred pounds to keep someone from taking her dodo pickwick. So basically Spike offers her freelance, and so they go out and they kill basically a lot of vampires. Um, and in the fifth book, which is my favorite, so she and Spike, they have to go out and do an honest job, and so they go out to lay carpet for this very elderly man. And in the, in the course of laying the carpet, it turns out he's some sort of a demon. Um, and so they have to fight him, and they defeat the demon. Um, so this book, Spike is mentioned, but he doesn't appear, and I was just really disappointed. Uh, so this one, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, you know, they have set up the next book, which is probably the last book. Um, and, uh, I really want to know, um, what he does with the character. I'm also a little terrified. Um, and also none of his series are done. <laughs> so aside from Thursday, he has, um, the Nursery Crime series, which we're still waiting on a book three. And I checked on Goodreads today and it looks like there actually might be a 2.5 which would be kind of amazing. Um, the Nursery Crime series is really great because it's hard-boiled nursery crime. It takes place in Reading, England, where all of the nursery crime, nursery rhymes that we know from childhood, like Jack Spratt, Mary Mary, the Gingerbread Man, the th Big Bad Wolf, the Three Bears, they're real! <laughs> so there's all these nursery rhyme in-jokes. He also has his Shades of Grey series, which is a society that is built on um, whether or not you can see certain colors in the visible light spectrum. Um, and then he has a YA series that he started called The Last Dragon Slayer. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Originally it was The Last Dragon Slayer, and then now it's, I think, oh, what's it called? The Kazam Chronicles, or The Chronicles of Kazam. This is also one that went through a rejacketing between book one and book two, which is why I'm having trouble with it. Because I love the first book jacket. I'm not really wild about the second and third book jackets, but I really love the first. So um, that one, it follows an orphan named Jennifer Strange, who in the first book learns that she is the last dragon slayer. She will slay the last dragon, Mount Cassian, who is alive. Um, and it's really fun. I also read that for um, the SRC. So... But, so, Jasper, hurry up and write some things. He also takes amazing photographs. If you follow him on Instagram at all, he just takes amazing photography. Um, but yeah, so, Thursday is my favorite series. Um, I'm glad I finished book seven, finally. It's still, I love it. It's, just, it's one of those things where if I were writing it, I would not have done this, but Jasper wrote it. And it's his book, um, and it totally makes sense for his world and the narrative that he is heading for. Um, but... You know, maybe I probably wouldn't have been quite so rough on on Thursday, but he's Jasper's ruthless. He's ruthless, I tell you. Um, so, but Thursday is my favorite series, and I kind of hope he gets book eight done because obviously it's been two and a half years almost now, and we still have no Thursday book. So that is Thursday next, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye. This is my favorite one. <laughs> This is this volume is designated a Gramma Site Zero Tolerance Area Jurisdiction Pest Control Medicine, a lost and good book.